Hello, happy Wednesday, everybody coming up tonight on Now. They're talking about casinos in York County. What about the ones we already have? How are they doing? We'll take a look. And turning left at a red light. You can't do it right now in Maine, but lawmakers are discussing a bill that would change that. Also, a day in the life of Governor LePage. I hung out with him and we'll see what it's like. This is New Center Now. and welcome to New Center Now. I'm Jessica Gagne, in for Amanda Hill, who is enjoying a lovely vacation this oh, week. Oh, and I'm Lee Goldberg. That vacation, I think, is from me. Yes, so, uh, we've said that Good for week. her. Uh, <laughs> hey, like it or hate it, they're mm -hmm. talking about yet another casino in our state, specifically York County. It was the topic at a public hearing in Augusta today. Most of the people there asked questions about the casino's potential owner rather than focusing on whether to bring a third casino into the state. The way the question is worded the license for the facility would only be granted to one person and his company, the same person who funded the successful campaign for the first casino in Maine, Hollywood Slots in Bangor. So we already know there are two casinos here, but how are they doing? Well, Chris Costa checks out the economic impact as casinos and how they're doing on their local communities. Shannon O'Leary has lived in Oxford County her entire life. And she says she's a fan of what the Oxford Casino has brought to the area. Every weekend it's packed to the brim. People are parking on the other side of the street sometimes. Those customers spend their money at the slot machines and tables, and portions of that go to the state, the county, and the town of Oxford. Oxford County gets about $730,000 a year from casino revenue that gets used for tax relief. It's been a steady source of money. It's not a uh, windfall, but it certainly helps. In 2016, the town of Oxford got almost $1.6 million from casino revenues here. In Bangor, the city received almost $500,000 from Hollywood Casino, and both areas say it's money they'll gladly take. I don't think it's a magic bullet for ending financial woes for organizations. We'd like to see more, uh, but we'll take every dollar we can get. County administrators like Scott Cole fear that a third casino in the state could take away from the customers that create tax relief. The pie is only so big, and, and when you cut more pieces, each, each recipient gets less. We respect those who are pursuing a, a third facility, a third casino in Maine, but we don't think on the whole it's good for Maine. In Oxford, Chris Costa, News Center. The town of Oxford has steadily received more money from the casino revenue each year from 2013 to 2016. Yeah. And like we said, this is, you know, a talker all the time. Every time you bring up a casino, somebody on both sides usually comes forward. So Well, we've uh, got comments already. Uh, Peter says, no casinos. Please put that money into drug treatment centers. Bob says, please, no casino in York County, so um, no surprise, there are some opinions out there. And speaking of opinions, uh, we're not even going to pretend a lot of people care about anything else besides snow this weekend is what everyone's talking about. And Keith is here yeah. with uh, how much you can look forward to. Look forward to, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I try to put a positive spin. That's uh, optimistic. <laughs> Let's start with the fact that actually we're going to have one nice day before that. So I'm trying to, that's the positive side of everything. 46 was the high today in Portland, uh, one of the first days that we've been in the mid 40s for uh, much of March. It has just been a cool, cooler than average month. Right now in the low 40s and upper 30s tonight, we're going to start to clear out. We have some snow showers out there right now, rain showers along the coastline, but these will kind of dissolve over the next few hours. So later tonight will be partly cloudy to mostly clear and things will be fine. You can see on the satellite picture there. Now, nice day through the day uh, on Thursday, sunny from start to finish. And then on Friday, here comes our storm system moving in from southwest to northeast on Friday afternoon, late afternoon and early evening. And that, no doubt, is the story of the weather. We are gonna see accumulating snowfall, in some cases, plowable snowfall. Adrian will, uh, Break out the snowfall map in a few minutes. La, 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 la. Yeah, I know. Not <laughs> listening, Keith. Forget it. Hey, it is uh, take two on a story that we first started to bring you last night, hashtag technical difficulties. It is about multi-level marketing companies like It Works, Beachbody, Nerium, just to name a few. You may have some friends who want you to try a product or join a team, and if you've ever considered joining that team or wondered how these work, then this story is for you. Avon calling. Forget the house calls. Hey, it works, go-getters. 
Here you go. One green berry shakeology. Now it's the social media blitz. If you have Facebook, you've likely seen the pitches to try a product or join a team. You never know who's interested in being an ItWorks loyal customer or distributor. Multi-level marketing, or MLM, reaches farther than ever thanks to social media. Our outreach is the world. Falmouth mom, Laura Faraher, sells <laughs> ItWorks products. And I never thought in a million years I would be selling anything. She also recruits new members for the health and wellness company. I like that incentive. Her friend Danielle Roy sells beauty brand Narium. I raised my kids on a single income and it's really allowed me to be able to not miss a step um, in my financial contribution to my family. The women sell different products but the business model is the same. This is a crude representation of multi-level marketing. A lesson so now from have, USM uh, marketing professor, Dr. Patricia Griffin. On whatever sales they generate. Sales, way, along with recruiting, recruiting, is the key to getting paid. Whatever these two people sell, they get compensated on it, and this person gets a piece of the action. On it goes, with the person at the top earning more money with each sale in the chain. It's been a lot of fun, and, and I've been fortunate enough to be really successful. The company doesn't want her to talk salary specifics, but she says she's a triple diamond. That means she's earning six figures, according to this It Works chart easily found online. I'll never say it's easy. I'll never say, you know, do this and it's a, you know, you're going to get rich quick. It doesn't work like that. Most of the time, it's a few people who make a lot of money. The business model has its skeptics. And if you are thinking, well, hold on, that business structure sounds familiar, isn't that a pyramid scheme? Pyramid schemes well, are illegal. MLMs are not. This business model has been around forever. You know, I remember when I was little, Avon, my mom had an Avon lady that came to our house. Here's the difference. Pyramid schemes focus solely on the recruitment of new salespeople rather than sales of a product. Some people think skipping meals is a great way to lose weight. Last year, Herbalife got into trouble with the Federal Trade Commission. They agreed to pay $200 million to consumers and a business overhaul so they wouldn't be charged with operating a pyramid scheme. Have you set your March goals yet? When it comes to MLMs, Dr. Griffin's advice is simple. Do your homework. It could be a marvelous opportunity, but do your homework. Faraher did. Now it's a different type of homework that's the biggest payoff for her. Now, there are startup costs associated with these business models, and those costs do vary greatly, which is exactly why Dr. Griffin and the women I spoke with said, do your research on these. They they can be great opportunities, but again, you have to be very passionate about the product because oftentimes you are selling to family and friends at least to start. Sure, I had some friends who did it uh, that said it was easy for them because it allowed them to stay home with kids, uh, so that was a benefit, but uh, again, she loved the product she was selling as well too. So, so that way that if passion. you get stuck with it, at least yeah. you use it yourself. Exactly, so. yeah. Well, just like anything too, it's what you put into it, you can potentially get out of it, just like any industry. All right. All right. Thank you, Adrian. I have a sense of humor, and I don't take myself too seriously, and I do have fun. A day in the life of Governor LePage. We've all seen the public side, and he can be a polarizing figure for sure. But what is he actually like? We'll find out later on New Center Now. Welcome back, everybody. One of the things you might learn in driver's ed is that you can turn right at some red lights. But one main representative is presenting a bill that would also allow you to turn left at a red light. Take a look. We've all been here, stopped at an empty intersection with no one coming at you. If you were turning right, you'd already be well on your way. But turning left, you're at the mercy of the light. Enter an act to allow a motorist to make a left turn at a red light under certain conditions. In short, as long as you've stopped and there are no cars coming or people crossing or signs telling you not to turn left, you can turn left. We asked on Facebook how you feel about the bill, and majority of the 150 plus comments contained the words, no way, bad idea, and why. 
but there are some who agreed with the change. A staffer at the House Republican office said he contacted the bill's presenter, Timothy Terrio, for us and said Terrio didn't want to speak on camera and that the bill was submitted at the request of a constituent. So someone in China is sick of sitting at red lights and turns out he or she is not alone. According to drivinglaws.org, majority of the states in our country have laws that allow left turns on red under particular circumstances, like turning from a one-way street onto another one-way street. Maine is one of only a handful of states that flat out says no. If you're eager to see if that changes, you'll have to wait a bit longer. The bill was discussed at a public hearing on Tuesday, and a work session on it has yet to be scheduled. Well, we don't want to invite him back with more weather, but our bosses tell him we have to. I voted no. I was overruled. <laughs> the regular segments here on New Center Now is a day in the life. You give us ideas of interesting people you would like to know more about, whether it's what they do or who they are. So I spent part of a day with Governor LePage. This was cool. not political, it was personal. Governor, how are you? Great job. On this day, Governor LePage appeared in Freeport at a luncheon celebrating Maine's higher event program. According to his staff, the governor attends about 300 events like this every year. Governor Paul LePage. A quick speech, a chat with the press, and it's out the door, back into the car, and a drive back to the Capitol. On that drive, phone call after phone call after phone call, constantly at work. Once back to Augusta, it was another meeting, and then some time to chat. Up first, something most people are aware of already. I absolutely despise the press. But did you know that at one time, the relationship with the media was more love than hate? When I was the mayor of Waterville, I thought the reporters in Waterville and the, the newspaper was fair. If they had a question, they didn't have the answer, they would call me and try to clarify. It wasn't 100% positive, but it was very, very fair. It was balanced. We all see the governor in his official capacity, so I was interested to learn more about him as a person and a father and a husband. Like, does he bring work home with him at the end of the day? No, I have a wife that is, uh, she has a, the sense we never talk about work, and she's got a way of cutting it off, and we talk about the family. So she doesn't, she's not interested, and I, I know enough not to push it. <laughs> The governor is described as a tireless worker, and while he accepts that, he claims to have some balance as well. I work hard, but I relax. They just don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I play hard, and I work hard. So when I'm with my wife and we go on vacations, or we're at Booth Bay, or we're alone, we have a lot of fun together. I, I read, I woodwork in the winter. In the summer, I golf and ride a lot of bikes. While I fully agree, the governor's road to political prominence is well documented and his life story could be a movie script from running away at 11 years old to having the president of the United States point to him as an example in front of all of the other governors in the country. And he says, where's my skinny governor from Maine? He says, because I'd lost a lot of weight. Where's that skinny governor? He says, get up here. He says, I've been looking at all your financial conditions. This guy's got a billion dollars in the bank and most of you are underwater. <laughs> I was pretty, I was, that was pretty good. My daughter is on cloud nine for where we've come and, you know, where I've come from and where we are as a family now. This family will leave the Blaine house in 2018 and some of the perks that come with the job. The two things that I'm going to miss the most about being governor is going through airports without having security, having to go through security and the best parking spots at every place you go. Those two things I'll miss. Other than that, I can't wait. <laughs> As we got ready to wrap up, the governor got word that there was a young man in the lobby who wanted to pop in and take a picture. And with a self-proclaimed soft spot for Maine's children, the governor obliged and spent about 10 minutes chatting with the family. But before I left, a little word association. Family. Kids. Maine. Love it. The media. Not much respect. Golf. Lack of respect. Golf is a relaxation. Friends. Uh, very few, and you treasure them. The state of America. State of America, we got a lot of work to do to become great again. Retirement. Someday. 
<laughs> Guys, one of the most interesting things that I learned on this day was how devoted his staff is to him. A lot mm -hmm. of the people that work in the uh, in Augusta have never worked in politics before, never thought they would, but they love Paul LePage as a person, so they wanted to go wherever he was and be by his side. And I mean, that is, you know, that's you know? a pretty, pretty cool. you know, it says a lot about the guy, right? I'm just glad you got in with him. He yeah. must like you. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, You're not did, really the he media. He despises <laughs> all media. So I, I'm like, hey, what does I that thought we were you? getting along good here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah pretty, well, I, you know, I, I don't, obviously it doesn't really mean that, but I'm sure it's adversarial at times, right? I, That's I just kind of how it goes. I imagine one of the other questions which I asked him was, would you ever do this again knowing what you know now? And he's like, absolutely not. He says, I wouldn't do it, you know, if I had known what it was going to be like right. eight years later. You hear that from so. a lot of outgoing presidents as yeah. well. Right. So. You know, they age quickly in those couple of years. <laughs> it was interesting to get to meet him, so. Good story. Go. Good stuff. Um, all right. So the weather. Snow. So snow in April. I don't know if we have these pictures. Oh, wow. It Aww. does happen. Now this is 2011, and um, Lee, we're trying to remember the name now. We think that it is Julie. I know her last name is Sweetser. It's definitely Sweetser. We definitely want to thank her for sending these in. But, but this was this her is death. Adorable. This is April first. This happens. April 1st, six years ago. We've had two ago. big ones on uh, April 1st. The other was 1997. Really? And that was a 20-plus inch snowstorm for Massachusetts. Yeah. She said this was a foot of snow on her deck. Yeah. It, wow. so was, she was in strong Maine uh, when that happened. I'm setting so. the stage yeah. for something here. Uh, foreshadowing. Uh, foreshadowing. Gonna, it's like Stephen King here with his writing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I got to get Stephen. That's like my goal, by the way, in, in life, is to get mentioned in one of his books. Because Kupo is mentioned in several of his books by name. So then I, I won't tell you about my experience fact. with him. Then. If, they ever, be even if more he ever jealous. does it, I'm just going to retire at that point. All right. Got a few snow showers, a little grapple out there. Uh, one of Tom's weather watchers told him to get a little grapple uh, out across the interior. Otherwise, a few rain showers. All of this will settle down by later on tonight. It will be mostly clear by 11 or midnight. After that, we're clear through the day on Thursday. So there is one really nice day in here, the nicest day of the week by far before we have to deal with our storm system that moves in as we head into Friday afternoon and Friday night coming in from southwest to northeast. And that, of course, is the lead story. So let's talk about this storm a little bit. It will be a continental storm that moves out over the ocean. It has some pros and cons, in my opinion, as far as its ability to produce accumulating and plowable snow. The pros are that it's going to be cold and there's a high pressure system that's supplying that cold air from the north and the track is to the south, so it doesn't drag any warm marine air into it. The cons as far as a big snowstorm, the fact that obviously it's going to be the beginning of April, so you're going to be fighting boundary layer temperatures, which means temperatures closest to the ground. Now the computer models disagree a decent amount, but this is probably a top five disagreement for being under three days away from the storm. Take a look at the European computer model here. Nine inches in Portland, 13 in Freiburg, 11 in Berlin, 10 in Sanford. Now capture that image. Let me show you the American GFS model. It is a non-issue according to the GFS model. But I've seen this many times before, and I want to say that 80% of the time, the European model is right, particularly in, in a more complicated synoptic kind of setup. So the map that Tom and I have come up with is a slight compromise, but certainly leaning towards that European solution. Five to 10 inches of snow, including Portland, into the interior, into the foothills. Jackpot of 10 to 14 across New Hampshire, far western Maine, and then two to five over down east and the mid coast. Obviously, we'll be adjusting this forecast as we get closer. We feel this is a fair initial offering, though, leaning towards that euro because it just seems like the European does a better job with this kind of stuff. All right, after that, we're in better shape for Sunday. Monday and uh, Tuesday, there could be some clouds and maybe a little bit of light snow again on Tuesday over far southern Maine and then temperatures in the mid-40s on Wednesday. So that snow, guys, timeline, just real quick, is Friday afternoon, Friday night, and through much of the day on Saturday. Stay with us. We'll uh, keep on that snowfall forecast for you. Let's hope it just keeps going up from here, right? Yeah. It's warmer. Keith is not nice. <laughs> Cindy Williams is. So she's going to tell us what's going on at 530. I may not be after hearing that forecast. So <laughs> no fun. Well, here's a look at some of the stories we're working on for New Center at 530. Uh, position that the city created after that noise street fire, that deadly fire back in 2014 is now being eliminated. Well, the city tells us why it's getting ready, getting rid rather of the housing safety administrator and landlords are telling us why they say they really ought to keep that position in place. 
Another honor flight main trip is leaving this weekend aboard two World War II veteran World War II veteran Clifford West. He shares his remarkable story of service to our country with us and rumors have been swirling and now it's a reality. Get a look at the features of the new Samsung Galaxy 8 phone. We'll oh, check it out. I can't even keep up. Can't keep up. <laughs> All right, News Center now continues after the break. All right, today's brain drops is about something called senescent cells, which is cells in your body that are basically old. They've di divided about 50 times and they stop. And so there's, they're linked to some problems with aging. So in these mice, they found a way to get a protein to block it. So basically the body destroys its own old cells. With that, with these mice, they, they found fur increased, kidney damage was reversed, and they increased the time they could run on a wheel. So basically they reversed their aging process. But as most things in science, there are catches to this, one of which is they think in a human, the senescent cell is a way to stop cancer from spreading because the more copies your cells make, huh. the more mistakes it can make in DNA. But there might be something here that could so help I thought, us. I thought, I so I could get my hair back. You could get your so hair back. A you might have the a tumor, but you could get your hair cut. But okay. no, but there's, some, there's something here. They're just to figure <laughs> right. out how to, to manipulate it. It's right. interesting. All right. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. That's going to do it for New Center now. New Center 530 is next. We'll see you tomorrow.